with the running back situation, um, Isama, can he carry it, whatever, 22 times a game, or, or just, just talk about that whole situation? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think we're in a really good spot. Obviously, you got Abu and Carson that have played a lot. Um, you know, feel really good about where those guys are, and, and you know, the opportunities now and in the future will only continue to pour into everybody else that's either here or coming here. So, um, no, I, I think we feel really good about where that running back room looks going into the bowl game for sure. So you don't change your offense or anything? I mean, no. just no. bring in some snow and no, yeah, yeah, we'd like some snow. That'd be good. Yeah, right. Um, so okay, so what about? The, the phrase opt out has become a very popular sure. these days. What is what do you know so far about your yeah. Iowa State situation? Yeah, I mean everybody that can practice has practiced so far. Um, you know, I, I think really probably the only guy that's in that mode of is you know TJ and you know we really even haven't you know got into those conversations yet. I, I think at the point in time when we need to, we will. Um, and then again, I, I'm, I think we got to do and protect the guys that we need to protect for, you know, themselves and their future. But you know, as of right now, the positive is everybody's practiced, everybody's been in, been practicing, and in any time we have to have a conversation like that, we'll do that more closer to the game time. What about so you've not had that talk with TJ? We have not. No. Be the only one? He'd be the only one. Yes. I guess not TJ specific, but what are those conversations like, and how do you? How do you, as a coach, tip one way or another, like, hey, you probably should sit out this game, or hey, it'd be good for you to play? Well, I think the higher you are to be in a, a high-end draft pick, I think you got to really make a, a, a smart decision on you know, what's best for you and your future. I, I, th I still think these bowl games are such huge opportunities for seniors to showcase their ability. I, I go back to Jake Hummel. I mean, Jake Hummel signed with a top agent because of how he played in the Clemson game. You know, Charlie's agent came to see Charlie play and si ends up leaving, signing Jake. And Jake played so well in that game. I think it just elevated his stock, you know, incredibly. So I think for seniors in general, it's such a huge opportunity. Um, and, and for all of our kids, it's a huge opportunity. But certainly Certainly seniors still, it's a great opportunity to showcase yourself. There's a lot of NFL eyes on these bowl games, which I think is really smart. And then I think there are some guys, you know, Brees a couple years ago, you know, it was a simple decision. I mean, you, you know, you can't put yourself in that spot. And, you know, again, you know, again, Brees practice all the way through. And then we made the decision when it was time to make the decision. And, you know, I think TJ's really probably close to that. I, I think, again, you know, what's the player want to do? What's the family want to do? And, and then we're going to support whatever's best for our players. So, um, you know, I, th I think I think it's a it's a whole it's a whole person and a whole you know entity decision and, and the great thing is we got great kids that really want to play sometimes you're you got to be the one to tell them hey listen this is probably not in your best interest where are you guys health wise yeah I think in a pretty good spot um, you know really what our whole mission the last really the last two weeks since we played um, you know, we really tried to put in three weeks, I guess, is put our focus on one of them was getting healthy. You know, I think just, uh, you know, the, the length of the season, you know, really where we were after um, trying to get ourselves healthy. We practiced last week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We probably were going to practice this week. We practiced this morning and we'll practice again Saturday, um, get through, you know, finals and certainly get through graduation this weekend and then really start to use next week as game planning. You know, our coach is now kind of coming back off the road of recruiting and, you know, putting a, it's just a crazy time in college football th this time of year. But um, the nice thing is for us, I feel like we were maybe as set as we needed to be and it's allowed us to handle things methodically of get the season done with, get ourselves aligned of who's coming back, where are we? And then the, the next big part of it is finish off this recruiting class and certainly game planning along the way. Yeah, I, I still think Malik's got a real chance to play. You know, again, that was a forearm deal. You know, he was out of practice today. Um, I think, again, where we are and what that looks like by the time we get there, the nice thing is we still got two weeks and, you know, you're talking the 29th. So I, I still think there's time for Malik. Um, but, you know, I, I would say he's 50-50 in the game. But, um, you know, the way he's trending right now, I think we're all pretty excited about where he's got the ability to be, hopefully, for that game. Matt, we all saw what Rocco did in terms of stats, numbers. Uh, what did he do to build the trust with his receivers before he took his first snap as a starter uh, that impressed you the most? Yeah, I, I, I really just think, I, I think back to January when Rocco came back here and my, probably my, my first impression would have been how he came into that TCU game, you know, which was a tough spot to be in. And, 
you know, there wasn't a lot of momentum that game a year ago. Um, but I felt like when he went in, I think just how he was such a great teammate through the season, there was an energy around Rocco when he came into that game. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that Rocco really did a great job of last off season was just went to work. I, you know, I, I, his winter conditioning, how he trained, how he competed. Um, you know, we do a lot of competition stuff in the off season, And I, I just think what Rocco did is he put his head down and he went to work at his craft. And, and I think he had a lot of respect by everybody in this locker room. You know, when he when we went to the summer and, you know, the dynamic of things shifted, you know, I think Rocco almost everybody galvanized around him. And, you know, you, you, the stats are one thing. I, I think you, then you go to that Ohio game, you know, and how he played and the kids up all night puking, and, you know, literally we're at halftime and he's, you know, he's outside and, and, you know, can't even come into the locker room and finishes that game. I just think those intangibles, you know, I think what, what I appreciate about him is the it factor that he brings to the table. And it's going to be really fun too. And we've talked about this. How do you keep filling in the gaps? How do you keep growing as the quarterback within the system? And there's a lot of growth that's out there for him to continue to grow into. But I think the human being, and I know I've, I've said this, you know, when you compare him and Brock, what are some of the things that are similar? Um, I think the humility to when you, when you have success, give praise to others. And when it goes wrong, you got to take the heat, you know? And, and unfortunately, you know, I, I think back to a lot of times when Brock, man, it was the receiver that dropped the ball, that why the ball was intercepted, or the receiver ran the wrong route. But nobody else knows that. We know that. But he always stood up there, and he took the blame. And I think Rocco's got those same qualities. I think for a young guy to have that in today's world, it's pretty impressive. And I think he had all those intangibles and has brought those to the, to the podium in terms of how he handles himself. And just one more for me. Um, Miles said there was a point in the season where maybe he just felt a little bit off, just wasn't quite completely it, it hadn't all crystallized for him mm -hmm. and then the last several games it really did can you talk about him fighting through I guess a little bit of a I guess what he would call kind of a little bit of a funk midseason yeah. to finish as strong as he could yeah you know I, I give Miles a lot of credit um you know there's a lot of expectations and probably a lot of expectations from the head coach and everybody in our walls as well for Miles going into his junior year and you know, I think there were there were some good moments and tough moments early, and really probably for the first time, Miles, you know, faced some some real adversity through the football season. And again, you either go one way, and we all face that in every player that I feel like goes through this journey from high school to college and college to your senior year. You're gonna you're gonna face whether it's through injury, whether it's personal, whether it's on the field performance, you're going to face adversity. And you kind of become defined by how you respond to it. And for Miles, I think if you do watch the last four games of the season, I don't know if we had a defensive back that played better football for us in those last four games. And you know, I, again, the only way through it is going back to work. You got to look at your process. You got to look at how you do things. You got to look at how you practice or how you study film. And I, I give him a lot of credit because he had enough humility to take the criticism or the coaching of, hey, these are some of the areas that you're off on. And knowing that he is uber competitive and he wants to be the best. I mean, I, I think Miles by far has proven that he's one of the best uh, defensive players that we have and certainly one of the best defensive players in the Big 12. I think he's a physical tackler when he's at his best. He plays the ball extremely well. And I think you look at that last four game stretch and certainly you can even go to the last game. I think there's four or five PBUs in the game. Uh, how he physically tackled was really impressive. And so I think he's on a, on a trajectory to really go have a phenomenal senior year. And what a great opportunity this, you know, in two weeks to put an exclamation point on his junior year, fight through the adversity, and have that confidence going into his senior year to be a true bell cow for this football team. A little bit earlier, you talked about the calendar this time of the year. Mm -hmm. How challenging is it from a head coach's perspective to handle finishing your signing class, the transfer portal, roster retention, recruiting out of the <laughs> portal, all of those different things at one time? Yeah, I think when your program's built on um, maybe what's right, it's not super challenging, you know? And, and, you know, for us, I think, 
you know, those are one of the things that, that's been a bedrock for us is, man, we, we kind of know who we are. Um, you know, we got great relationships with our kids, so there's complete transparency of where they're at. And, you know, and, and then it allows us to have a great vision to continue to build the program forward and build a true program. You know, we're not a rent a program where, you know, you're going to rent a team for a year and we'll never survive in that world, but we build program and you know try to get the right guys here to continue to you know be the best team we can be year in and year out and so um, I think that has allowed us to you know as the rest of the world certainly looks or feels crazy um, you know I think we've just kind of honed into who we are and not try to waver too far off of it and and just keep finding the right humans to come into our football program and, and surround ourselves with the right process around it so that that to me is what I still love about what we get to do here and, and certainly what we've tried to do along the same lines there's a court ruling yesterday that now seems to allow transfers to transfer multiple times without having to see out what's your take on that as head coach yeah I don't know I who I, that it's I, I probably don't know enough about it you know the whole thing is just an interesting time um Again, what I've always said about the transfer portal one way or another is if you build your program the right way with the right people, then you have the ability to just continue to build a, a football program. And that's really what we've tried to do. And um, so, yeah, it's just a really interesting time. Obviously, there's a lot of things that are, you know, challenging out there for football coaches today and building programs. But I think it just puts the onus back on you of having the right humans leading the program and then doing a great job of trying to build your guys, build the right program. Um, that kids want to be a part of and stay a part of. So those are the things we've really tried to focus on, stuff we can control. What are some uh, position groups that really stand to benefit from these extra bowl practices and then maybe some of the younger guys on both sides of the ball that are really going to use this to kind of catapult themselves into the spring? Boy, I mean, I don't know if there's a group that doesn't benefit right now from it, to be honest with you. You know, we're just so young. I mean, um, man, you talk about the running back room and the youth in that room, um, the quarterback room. I mean, you know, the amount of reps that those guys continue to need. I mean, those they're so young players and just situational football and, you know, continue to pour into them. You know, the offensive line, I think that group, there's a lot of young, really talented young players in that group that, that – you know, from our veteran guys that, that we have to, you know, certainly our young guys, there's just enough reps with Coach Clanton and, and the time and the energy that those guys can have practicing football. Um, the wide receiver room, I still think is, there's a lot of youth in there. You know, you talk about a guy like Benny Nagoya and you talk about, you know, Jamaica Parks and those guys who have flashed great talent. And, you know, for those guys to get great reps, the D-line room, I mean, all those guys are coming back. They're young puppies that are, I mean, from Dom Orange to J.R. Singleton, you know, I mean, and Joey Peterson, those guys need reps to continue to grow forward. And, you know, it's been fun. Samuel Same is a talented young guy that has continued to flash through these bowl practices. Linebacker, I mean, all those guys are young pups. You know, I mean, you, you look at what those guys have done and those guys need constant reps. You know, I think we'll be sprinting the spring practice with that group. And then the secondary, you know, as you said, you've had some guys dinged up, but a lot of those guys have gotten some playing time. And, you know, you talk about J-Mo and Tayshawn James and Cam Smith, those freshmen, all those guys have been critical because they played critical roles of our team having success, Drew Surges. But they're young puppies. I mean, they need reps and they need to continue to grow. And so I, I just think you look collectively at our football team and, you know, it's hard to replicate football, right? I mean, basketball, you guys can go, you can play five on five and go play basketball all year. But football, you only really get better by playing football. And, you know, I think this, this, this time has allowed us to really get good fundamental work with all of our position coaches and then to prep for a, an, a, an opponent. Again, I think you'll see a lot of guys preparing to play, whether it be on special teams or offense or defense in this game and, you know, continuing that focus and use it as an exclamation point for, for certainly 20, 2023 and in a springboard, hopefully, as we get ourselves into the off season of 2024. But, you know, we haven't flinched from how valuable this time can be just because we're such a young football team. And then um, I think the thing that's been exciting is our kids have looked forward to practicing. They can't wait to go to practice. And that, that part about it, too, is really rewarding. And I think sometimes the younger you are, the more you look forward to practice. You know, and, and our group certainly has that kind of energy around it right now. You've praised this young talent from fall camp. Has that group kind of performed up to your expectations? Or have they maybe even taken it a step further and kind of surpassed what you thought that they could do? 
Yeah, and I, I don't know what that number looks like of the amount of freshmen played, and maybe you guys do, you know, but I, I know that I we wouldn't have won football games had that group not been ready to play. I mean, the amount of young guys that have stepped in and played critical moments for us. I mean, and I'm just talking about, you're talking about Cam Smith and what that guy did for us on special teams. You talk about Tayshawn James. I mean, the play he makes against um, Oklahoma State and, and our nickel package on third down. If he doesn't make that play, we don't win the football game. You know, you talk about Jamo's play at BYU and stepping in the way he played against K-State. Um, man, you talk about our freshman linebackers and what just Jack Sadowski and Cooper Ebel were able to do for us and, you know, critical roles and on special teams. And, you know, you, you talk about Drew Surges and what Drew meant to our football team. I mean, Drew was playing critical special teams reps before he ever stepped into that role at K-State and played, played such a great football game for us. And then you flip on the offensive side and Carson Hansen and, and Abu and, and certainly you talk about Brendan Black. I mean, that group and, and, you know, we can't forget Ben. I mean, what he did for our team just in general to be such a playmaker and come in here in June and be ready to play like that. Um, yeah, it's remarkable. I mean, it, I've never seen anything like it. I think a lot of credit to those young men, um, a lot of credit to our coaching staff. And you got to remember, you know, that's a group that was put together through, you know, it wasn't like the perfect season a year ago. You know, there was there was adversity and it wasn't certainly the, you know, our finest season coming off of. So to be able to recruit a group of guys like that, that stand for what, you know, what what this program has stood for and then be ready to play, I think it's it's remarkable. And so we're, we're certainly a appreciative of each and every one of those young men. The bull game not only provides extra practices, but also a stage for some young guys to step up. What does that do for someone that may be a contributor, young guy, to be able to get out there and make some plays? Yeah, I, 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 again, just a, a game. You know, being able to play another football game and be able to play, um, you know, obviously this game has meaning to it. You know, it's a great bowl game. It's going to be a great crowd. It's going to be, you know, a great dynamic around the game. And I think just, the, again, you can practice all you want. But until you step on the field and it matters and everybody sees what's going on, um, it's really hard to evaluate your football team. And I, I think that's one of the great things for all of this young team is, man, how do we grow another step? You know, now you you play a postseason game. What's that look like? How do you prepare for it? What's that feel like? I think this young football team, um, if it can continue to grow forward, should have really special moments moving forward. So preparing to play in these games and these opportunities, I think that's really big for everybody involved. and. Um, you know, there's no shortcut through it. You just gotta, you gotta work through it, and you gotta understand what it's like. And can you stay focused long enough? I mean, we, we will have not played a football game in over a month, right? And so that's hard. And man, do you have the mental fortitude and toughness to stay the course? And you know, it's easy to say all that stuff, but man, it's really hard to do it. And and the younger you are, sometimes the more challenging it can be, just because you haven't been through it. So I think this is a great opportunity for us to really grow forward again. Matt, when we we were able to Zoom with you a couple of weeks ago. You were drawing some parallels between 2017's Liberty Bowl team yeah. and, and this one in that young team potentially building to the start of an era mm -hmm. for Iowa State football. Have you had a chance to reflect on maybe how true anymore, I guess, reflect anymore, I guess, on how true that might be? Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think back on that 17 team as much as that, as I, I, I look at it as there was a senior class at that time that kind of drew a line in the sand, you know, and, and you look at 17 and that was, uh, J.D. Wagner, and that was Joel Lanning, and that was Alan Lazard, and that was a group of guys that just had not experienced success, right? And um, and then I look at this year's group, and I look at, you know, Gary and Easton Dean, and I, I look at these guys that, uh, you know, Pogo. I mean, I mean, all these seniors that were not um, – they might not be household names, but man, the leadership that they provided through a lot of adversity, through tough and trying times, and knowing what this program has stood for, knowing what this program is about, and being able to maybe put it right back on track to where it's got the ability to go and continue to thrive forward. That is what I think the greatest parallel is. And so even the energy and the excitement about 
man, a bowl game and going to play and finishing the season the right way. I think those things are, it, it's got to start at the top. You know, as, as talented as you want to be a, a, a young, young, when you haven't been through these things or you haven't experienced this, I think, geez, almost half our roster, just because we're so young, hasn't really experienced this moment. And so, you know, I think they look to these veteran guys and, and their leadership along the way, and, and they've been remarkable. So I think that's the joy that I see that is par that has a great parallel. And, um, you know, this, this senior class has drawn a line in the sand and had provided incredible leadership through, you know, tough and trying times. And that part is remarkable. And I think there's no greater joy and excitement for me to be able to go play another football game with this team. <laughs> yeah, that's right. During uh, this era, the evolution and the role of a director of player personnel or a director of football operations seems to have kind of blown up. How important is it to have a strong understanding of player personnel, all those different kind of things that go on in your program? Yeah, it, I mean, it's huge. And, and you know, I, Derek's back there, so, but it gives me a chance to brag about him a little bit. But I think the biggest thing that I would just say is, uh, again, that role's great as long as it's aligned to the vision of the program. You know, unfortunately, a lot of people want to make their own name on, you know, recruiting, and that's what happens in recruiting, right? All these coaches, your two four seven, and your rivals, and everybody. That used to be how you got jobs in college, right? Because you, people like you said you were good recruiters, right? That, which you don't really know, and and the reality of it is, I'm not being mean about that. I'm just saying, like. Everybody used to use that as a platform to get jobs, which was really hard because the reality of it is, are you aligned to the vision of the program and is everybody working together to do a great job of building the team the right way, right? That's the key to success. And, you know, we're fortunate, Derek's been here, and he's been here longer than I have, right? And in, in, in terms of the program and, you know, how do you build the right humans and what does it take to win at Iowa State? And then you gotta have coaches that believe in that. So they're not kind of rogue trying to do their own thing. And, you know, we're fortunate that our alignment, that's always been right here. You know, we've always been able to have great humans that have been aligned to the vision and, you know, go into recruiting and, or, you know, going into any process and saying, man, these are our kind of people. This is what it's going to take to be successful here. It may be different X, school X, Y, and Z, but at our place, this is what it's got to look like. And I think with, when we've been working together and when we're aligned to one vision, it's, it's always given us a chance to be most successful. And I give Derek a lot of credit because he's got the ability to, you know, when the, the heat of the season is going, he, he's got the time and the vision to kind of, you know, get the lay of the land of what do we need to do? What do we need to look like? And, you know, it allows me to step back and, you know, look at those things. And then it allows us to deliver a consistent message to our staff as we go try to find the right pieces and add the right pieces to our football team. So um, yeah, we're fortunate. We really are. I mean, we have great humans that stand for what's right and we work together. You know, nobody's nobody's been about themselves. Everybody's been about how do we build Iowa State football to look the best way it possibly can. And I think that's certainly what's given us the best opportunity to be successful. So great question. All right, guys. Thank you.